My name is Evgeny Marozov. I'm a Yahoo Fellow at Georgetown University. I think the future of the internet will definitely be uh, responding to the demands and needs of the market and of the internet users. Uh, on the other hand, I think the uh, governments will be increasingly under pressure, in part by the citizens, to do more about protecting data and protecting freedoms online, and they would need to step in and regulate the space with law. What does it mean for individuals who suddenly have lost the ability to sort of stay anonymous after you know, 10 years or 15 years because everything they did in their past still haunts them now? So I think we'll be seeing more and more governments actually trying to use law and try to, look, to use legal instruments to influence how the future of the web will look like. I think right now they're actually waking up to the challenge. And given uh, the growing concerns about things like like privacy and things like surveillance online and things like uh, data profiling, for example, and open source intelligence, I think we'll be seeing more and more governments stepping in. In the next decade, I think we'll be seeing more and more tools devised by the civil society, by NGOs, by the media to actually increase transparency of what is being published online and of what is being read online. There is this very interesting initiative now at the University of California at San Diego, I think, which wants to color code Wikipedia. So, you know, entries in Wikipedia will be color coded based on the reputation of the contributor. So if you have already contributed 500 articles to Wikipedia and all of your changes, or most of your changes have been accepted, all of your new changes and all of your new edits will be displayed in green. And if, for example, you haven't contributed anything yet, all of your changes will be, will be displayed in red. So the people who are reading the article can get visual cues as to whether what you're reading is actually trustworthy and whether they can actually read it with confidence or whether they actually need to double check every single fact and every single sentence. Democracy may exist online, it's just that what does it matter? The fact that you can go and vote on any story you want to place it on the front page of the social news website like Dick, you know, it may feel as if you're being empowered, but if your real vote still doesn't really count in the elections, then that democracy which exists online is just a facade <laughs> and you're still living in sort of a very ruthless authoritarian system. The cycle in which we change our gadgets has shortened so, so much means that all of the current gadgets are going to be out of uh, use in three months, or nine months, or 12 months, and most of them will end up in Southeast Asia or Africa. Even with text messaging, what we see in Africa and Southeast Asia is that people have found all sorts of uses which we have ne never even thought about in the West, whether it's to transfer money, or whether it's to check on hospitals if they have an of blood supply, and I think the more powerful tools they have, the more new uses they will find. So it will be very interesting to see how this user-led innovation will also reshape then how we use those very technologies.